All right, so initially I had Duchess in my Hydra Nightmare team, but I changed her, and I changed her for Alatreon Blademaster. So last night I did, or this morning, like 2 o'clock in the morning, I, uh, I did a video on Whirlim Frost King, and I was pleasantly surprised because I initially went into the video thinking that he was going to be like that video I did with Sir Nick, where he was going to be outdated. Obviously, World and Frost King isn't the best legendary champion, but I was surprised that he wasn't absolute fucking trash because I was expecting him to be absolute fucking trash. And it really got me thinking, like, I've got so many champions in my vault that I don't touch. And I should touch them because they've been sitting there untouched. And, um, you know, no Diddy or anything, but I wanted to touch Alatreon Blademaster again and see what was up with him because I haven't touched him in a long time. And I did kind of like really want him at first. So in light of me summoning a six star blessing for him, yeah, I, I, I got a six star blessing for him. And uh, I was like, okay, this is going to be like my first champion to be fully, fully blessed because I don't, I don't have any other... Uh, champions that are that are fully blessed yeah he's the only one that like i've got a few five stars but he's the only six star that i have so i'm gonna talk more about this but we're gonna you know explain things so why did i start this off talking about duchess well initially i had duchess on my nightmare team and um i was doing like 40 ish mil sometimes more sometimes less uh but basically i was one king full auto uh, on nightmare but I put Alatreon Blademaster in and I took Duchess out. And I was able to extend my damage. This is a full auto key, by the way. This uh, 67 uh, on this account. And um, let me show you guys here. A lot of the damage did come from Cupidus Venus. Because Venus has a lot of AoEs and she's in uh, Cursed Gear. And then Nut, Newt. Alatreon Blademaster was able to allow my entire team to be tankier and enable them to do their job a lot more so efficiently uh, efficiently than duchess i think initially when i put my first nightmare team together uh, duchess was there to help keep my team alive but she wasn't really doing anything else in terms of damage mitigation and revives whenever they did die but i did notice after a while that my gear got good enough to the point where i didn't need to have duchess there to revive so I thought to myself, let's put an Alatran and Blademaster in place of Duchess, because Duchess is not really providing much damage on top of that. Yeah, she's got her 15% damage mitigation on top of that with her, like, with her passive. But um, I put Alatran in. He's got the Blessing. He got the Brimstone. Obviously, he was popping off with some damage. And I put him in Cursed Gear as well. So I wanted to share this with you guys. I did this on my phone. I really didn't expect to make content out of this, but... I wanted to talk about it. I was I was relatively surprised. I was excited, and I figured, why not share this with you guys? So I did my video on Alatran Blademaster uh, back in February. This was five months ago. And initially, I had him built out in Immortal and Relentless, thought being, if you could take more turns, that would be better. And that's true. But then I thought, well, why don't I put him in Cursed Gear and try to... Try to um, like push him in the direction of using him in Hydra, right? Because he's a, he was a limited champion. I'm not getting him again. And look, back then, I didn't have a six-star blessing for him. So I took him out of Relentless. I put him in Cursed Gear. And I'm going to show you guys his current build. And we'll talk about that in a minute here. So six-star blessing. Here are the pieces of gear. This is not the best gear that I have on him. This is like okay gear. Um, defense gauntlets. I just changed it right now off screen in between that fight that I just did and now. This was in um, in that fight that I showed you guys. He was wearing this, an accuracy chest. And, um, you know, I, I lost a little bit of speed putting this on, but I think this was better. Having a defense chest with the HP is a lot better. He doesn't need accuracy because he's not placing any debuffs other than you know, what comes from the curse set, but that's a flat 50% chance. So the accuracy, or sorry, the sets do not require accuracy to place debuffs. So like curse set, day set, uh, frost, you don't need accuracy for that. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I've 
I've been believing that for the longest time. We got speed on his boots. The ring I want to change out eventually to something else, probably this counterattack ring. But I'm still on the fence about it because it's a really bad ring. But we'll see. These are, this is the uh, amulet, and then here we got the the res um, banner. I don't think there's anything wrong with having resistance on him. So uh, why is he a good champion for Hydra? I'm gonna skim over it because I obviously have a video on it. But uh, for those of you who don't want to go see the video and you want to see everything right here, that's fine. A1 50% chance of extending two random buffs. A2, which is probably his bread and butter in terms of keeping my team tanky and alive. Because again, he was allowing my team to stay alive so that I didn't need a reviver like Duchess. So AoE and him in a hex set makes it so that the uptime for cursed or uptime for hex uh, stays up. It's a lot more consistent because right because before this, it was just Venus in her hex set. And she would play sometimes, but I noticed that during this run that I did on my phone because um, I didn't want to get out of bed. The, the Hex stayed up for pretty much the majority of the fight. AoE, or it's an AoE, A2 is an AoE. He places the increased defense and the shield. It's a pretty big shield equal to his max HP. So obviously you want to build him with more, uh, more uh, max HP. If I could build him with more, more max HP, I would. But I got to farm more gear. I got to get better gear. Now, this says if a target is a boss, these buffs are protected. That's just the way that he is for both his A2 uh, and A3. This is protected, and so his so is his block buff. Now, um, it, th this being protected means that the head of mischief can't do what he was doing to Duchess, right? Because Duchess would place her her uh, increased attack and her block buffs, but then the head of mischief would take it. So then, once once he got it, I can't place any debuffs on him, and it would kind of like ruin the fight sometimes. And then he would spread it making making the the fight a lot more difficult than it needed to be but because everything's protected i don't have to deal with that bullshit anymore now his passive is you know kind of nice it's a five percent boost turn meter and he's got to heal whenever um a debuff is placed expire uh, whenever a debuff is removed or expired so he's pretty strongy himself the brimstone allows him to place this um obviously the smite which will I think it was doing like 100k damage to the heads and then 300k to the headless heads. But he does get a speed boost. He gets all of these um, stat boosts as well as a 100% chance to place a protected smite. The head of cleansing, that head would often cleanse off the uh, smite. But because uh, he's here now with it, we were able to do a lot more. These are the masteries. I'm not going to go in depth, but don't blindly copy masteries. But feel free to blindly copy these masteries. So yeah, what I want to do is tweak out his gear a little bit more, make it better, and then see what I can come up with and hopefully record a Hydra run for you guys using Alatrium Blade Master. In fact, the other half of the reason why I came to you guys with this video is I, I wanted to know what you guys think. Here is my, my roster. I'm thinking of re reworking my team so that I could do even more damage in Nightmare Hydra. Again, right now my my average is somewhere between 40 to 60 mil. Uh, last week I did 91 mil. Again, that was a full auto team, but it, it's one of those RNG things, right? On this account. On my other account, I'm doing 200 plus, but that's because I have a Krizia up the ass and, and Krisk and everything. Um, so yeah, these are the champions that I, that I have. Let me take myself off screen here. These are the champions that I have. You know, I'll slow scroll. What do you guys think I could do in terms of building a full auto nightmare team? In hindsight, maybe I should have done this a long time ago. But I've been busy doing other things. But I'm here now. And, you know, you guys have always been so knowledgeable and so helpful in terms of uh, sharing your thoughts and opinions and helping me out. So not the best roster, but uh, it's my roster. This is my current. These are my current teams that I'm already using. Uh, and again, you don't you don't have to. I don't expect anybody to actually sit here and look at my entire thing and give me teams. But um, you know, it's just shot in the dark, shot in the barrel, whatever it is. I think this is pretty solid. 
but I'm, I'm curious to see what you guys would say.